Okay, here we're going to look at finding the vertical, horizontal, and oblique asymptotes, if any, of this given function. So here we've got f of x equals 5 minus x squared over x plus 3. So the first thing I'm going to do is, I guess let's start off thinking maybe about vertical asymptotes, since that's what it talks about first. So I'm going to think, are there any vertical asymptotes? Well, again, what we try to do is we try to uh, factor down our, our uh, rational function and see if there are any common factors in the numerator and denominator, and if so, we cancel them. Um, you know, technically the numerator does factor. It's actually a difference of perfect squares. So we can actually write that as the square root of 5 minus x times the square root of 5 plus x all over x plus 3. Well, okay, even if we do that, we're certainly not going to have any common factors. So since there's no common factors, we simply take the denominator, set that equal to 0, and then solve. Well, all we have to do is subtract 3 from both sides, and that'll tell us that x equals negative 3 is the vertical asymptote. And in this case, the only one. Okay, so again, a rational function may have no vertical asymptotes, but it can certainly have uh, more than one as well. So only one vertical asymptote here. Okay, so horizontal asymptotes. Horizontal asymptotes only occur if the degree of the numerator equals the degree of the denominator. Well, in this case, the degree of the numerator is going to be 2. The degree of the denominator is simply equal to 1. So since the degree of the numerator is not equal to the degree of the denominator, so the degree of the numerator does not equal the degree of the denominator, that tells us that there is no horizontal asymptote in this case. But if the degree of the numerator is exactly one larger than the degree of the denominator, there is going to be a, an oblique asymptote. So if the degree of the numerator is the degree of the denominator plus 1, right? So they're not exactly equal. It says we have to take the degree of the denominator, add 1. If the degree of the numerator equals that, that tells us that, yes, there is an oblique asymptote. Well, to figure that out, we have to do long division. So we will do the long division to determine our oblique asymptote here. So, all right, so let's see. The first thing I'm going to do is write this in descending order in the numerator. We have negative x squared. Notice there's no term involving just x. I'm going to write 0x just to fill it in. And then plus 5. And in the denominator, it's, it's already written in descending order, so I'm just going to leave it like it is. So it says we have negative x squared plus 0x plus 5 divided by x plus 3. All right, I always put this in parentheses to remind myself I'm going to have to distribute here in just a second. So the way I think about it is, I think, you know, x multiplied by what is negative x squared? Well, we would need a negative x. And then we multiply. Negative x times x is negative x squared. Negative x times positive 3 will be negative 3x. And then we have to take this entire quantity and subtract it all. So negative x squared minus negative x squared, those just cancel out. 0x minus negative 3x will give us 0x plus 3x. And then we can simply drop down our positive 5. So now I do the same thing. I'm looking at the x and the 3x. So I'm thinking x times what is positive 3x? Well, a positive 3. So we'll have 3 times x, which is 3x. 3 times 3, which is going to be positive 9. And again, we have to subtract. Uh, 5 minus 9 is going to be negative 4, and that's our remainder. So technically, at this point, you can actually stop and uh, pick out your vertical, or excuse me, not your vertical. You can pick out your oblique asymptote in this case. It's going to be whatever's in the numerator here. This is going to be the oblique asymptote. 
and we can say the oblique asymptote is going to be the line y equals negative x plus 3. So kind of intuitively the idea, what we've just done is we've taken that function, 5 minus x squared over x plus 3, and we said that's really the same thing as negative x plus 3 plus the remainder, which is negative 4, and we divide that by x plus 3. So all we've done is just a little bit of algebra to rewrite this function in a different way. So the idea is, as x become, you know, if you plug in really, really large values for x, say a million, a billion, a trillion, whatever, you're clearly going to get some, you know, a big number, you know, you'll get some number at the first part. But notice this last part simply will get closer and closer to zero. So intuitively for large for values of x that are large in absolute value, you know, a million, a billion, a trillion, negative million, negative a billion, negative a trillion. In a sense, this is going to be so close to zero, you can just focus in on this part. And it says, well, it's going to start resembling this line. So, again, we've now got everything we needed. We said our vertical asymptote was negative 3. We said that there are uh, no horizontal asymptotes. But then our oblique asymptote will be the line y equals negative x plus 3.